Welcome to the Airbus Instruments family. If you just purchased a Phantom system, you should get a box just like this. Today we're going to review its content and to find out what's inside and what are the characteristics of both the sensors and the gateway receiver. Remember that all the information that you're going to find in this video, you can also review on the QR codes that you can find at the top of your box. One for English and one for Spanish. So, let's start. When you receive your Phantom sensors, they will come in a box like this. Inside, you will find all the equipment you order arranged as follows. On the right side, you'll find all our sensors, while on the left side, you will find a gateway receiver along with all the, its accessories. Let's review each of the important components of these devices. For the vibration sensors, you will find two components the vibration sensor and the magnetic key. The magnetic key is used to activate the sensor to start using it. To use it, bring the magnetic key close to the LED receiver located at the top of the sensor. The magnetic key will activate the sensor then. After 3 seconds, remove the magnetic key and the sensor LED will blink 3 times and then turn off. This indicates that our vibration sensor is on and functional. Let's examine the parts of our triaxial vibration sensor. The vibration sensor consists of three essential parts. The plastic section with the label, the thread, and the base. On the label, you will find important information about certifications, the QR code that uniquely identifies the sensor, the sensor model, its serial number, and the FCC communication certification. Additionally, you can find its axis engraved at the top. This axis not only represents the brand, but also indicates the direction the accelerometers are pointing to. It's important that when you place them on your machines, these axes are pointing to your desired directions. At the bottom, you will find the sensor base with a fine thread to get screw. This set screw can be removed for independent operation, giving us multiple mounting options from the machine. Upon removing the set screw, you will find a rough surface of the sensor. This provides better contact if you're using an epoxy adhesive or any other kind of adhesive. This steer part of our sensor is the safety nut. This nut is secured by a small set screw, which can be easily removed. We'll remove it to show you how to open the sensor. And you can remove the set screw using a flathead screwdriver. Once the set screw is removed, the nut can be taken off. It can be removed by hand from the two metal and plastic parts. This gives us access to the sensor's battery and small plastic insulator. At the bottom of the plastic extension, there is an O-ring that acts as a seal. This O-ring gives your vibration sensor the IP69 rating. Additionally, we have access to the battery. The battery is very easy to replace. Just push it with your fingers, remove the battery, and you'll see it's a CR2477 model. These batteries are very accessible and easy to find. And as you can see, they're also very easy to replace. When placing the new battery, you can close the sensor again to placing it on its metal base and reattaching the nut. This nut acts as a seal and repositionally base. As you can see, the plastic part remains movable, as you can orient the accelerometers as desired and then fix the nut to keep the sensor stable with the axis pointed in the desired directions. If you want to know how to configure the sensor collection points, you can find the link in the comments for the configuration options. Now, let's review the components of the gateway. The package should include your gateway, the power connection cable, an adapter block, and the gateway antennas. We'll discuss each of these components in detail. The gateway receiver is responsible for receiving signals from your phantom sensors. On the front, there is a label showing the gateway model you're using, 
In this case, it's a Gateway 2.0. Additionally, we can see the serial number, FCC communication certifications, compliance standards, and QR code with all its configurations. There's also a display screen. This screen indicates connection status, the number of connected sensors, the configuration network, and other gateway characteristics. On one side, there is a small hole giving access to a reset button to restore the gateway to factory settings. Hit the button once to a self-reset, or hold the button for 10 seconds for a complete factory settings restore. At the top, uh, there are two antenna inputs. The right input is for the Bluetooth antenna, which receives data from the phantom sensors. The left input is for the Wi-Fi antenna, which helps to connect to your network wirelessly. At the bottom, you will find other power options. There is an input compatible with the included power connection cable. To remove it, just pull it slightly. Additionally, there is a 924 volts power option which is covered by the cap. You can remove the cap by applying a little pressure to access the 9 to 24 volts connection options. Also, on the right side, there is an Ethernet input for connecting to the sensor to a wire network via Ethernet. On the back of the gateway, there are rail mounts for easy installations in any area of your industry. By default, you will have these antennas with your gateway. To install them, simply screw them on the top of your gateway. Remember, the antenna signal pattern is not spherical, but elliptical, perpendicular to the direction they're pointing to. You can orient the antennas for a better reception. At the top, there is an LED indicator that shows the gateway is powered or, or off. If you want to know more about these configurations, you will find a link in the video description. And that's it for today's video. Remember that if you want to know more about Airbus Instruments products, you can find the, like, the links below or subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thank you very much.